Two winners at last year's Cheltenham Festival took Gordon Elliott's Cheltenham tally to 34, which leaves him joint fifth in the list of leading trainers of all time at the Cheltenham Festival. It looks like he's assembled a really strong team this year again. So we came along to Cullen Tra to see how preparations are going. Gordon, you have 34 winners at the Cheltenham Festival. You're the joint fifth leading trainer of all time at the festival. Like, it's obviously a meeting that means the world to you. Yeah, it does, to be honest. You know, Cheltenham is obviously the Olympics. Um, you know, so hopefully we can go back and make it 35 plus this year. Um, I didn't realise you said it earlier that I'm equal with Martin Pipe yeah. for a fifth most winning trainer in Cheltenham. So I'm looking forward to telling them that. <laughs> and like, it's only 12 years since you had your first winner. Were your first winners on the same day? Do you remember that going come back to your first couple in, in 2011? Yeah, I remember it well. Um, Chicago Gray and Carlito Bigante won. won uh, do you know, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a great day. Um, but it's a very special place, you said, Don. You know, and, you know, you're all year waiting to get there. So we're, uh, we're two weeks out now and I can't wait. Of those 34 winners, obviously you won a Gold Cup with Don Cossack. Phenomenal. You were leading trainer there twice so far with six and eight winners like those those meetings they must have been pretty special it? yeah look just to get a winner like the buzz is unbelievable you know do you know for 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 the whole team for all the staff for the owners you know it's it's an amazing place and uh do you know it, for me it is to be all then though you know um do you know you, you set your standards probably have very high going over every year and you know there's always going to be disappointments but uh there's nothing no feeling like having a winner and like the team that you have this year, it looks really strong again. We just saw a few of them working earlier on. Um, we can talk through one or two of them along the way. Conflated, he goes for the Gold Cup and he like he ran a big race there in the Ryanair last year. Yeah, look at him. I think the step up in triple suit him. Uh, he's, he's getting a lot more manageable now that he's getting older. You know, you can actually ride a race on him. Um, I think the race will suit him. I think it's an open race. Um, and we're looking forward to it, yeah. And his win in the Savile's Chase this year, he seemed to win with a little bit in hand like and, and even now he seems like he might even be a better horse this year than last year he looks a two believe it or not he, he looks a lot stronger and a lot more settled um yeah so we're very happy with where he is at the moment and uh do you know can't wait to have a go at the gold cup obviously it's going to be a competitive race but it's open do you know if, if you take the favorite out of it uh, there's not a lot between the whole lot of the rest of them um obviously absolute hard is, is 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 the horse if he comes back and did what he did last year it was awesome but uh my lids in good form and he hasn't run since Christmas. Was that always the plan? Yeah, to go straight there. Yeah, I said we we go straight there. So we obviously we could have him for entry and punches down after. Um, but yeah, no, uh, we're, we're we're two weeks now Friday, so uh, really looking forward. Tiapu, he's been a, well, I mean, he's always been a good horse, but he's he's taken another step forward this year. Won the Hatton Squares Hurdle, looked even better in winning the Galmai Hurdle last time. Yeah, I thought he's very good this year. Um, not the biggest horse in the world, you know. He 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 looks stronger this year. Um, you know, I think he takes a lot of the boxes for the stairs hurdle. He races behind the bridle. He's very, very relaxed. Um, I've never had a horse to win a stairs hurdle, so I don't know what it takes to train in one. But uh, listen to all these experts talking. To, you, you, you hear them saying that a horse that races behind the bridle and, and saves his energy is always a big help for them races. So that's exactly what he does. And all his best form to date has been on soft ground. But you're not that worried about no. a bit better ground. No, I'm not worried. Once the ground is safe, I'm happy. Um, He's not massive, like so. He's not. He's not. He's not really, really ground dependent. Um, obviously, it, once it's safe, we'll be happy. Mighty Potter, really exciting. Novice hurdler, dual grade one winner last yeah. year as a novice hurdler, and seems to be again making the right progress over fences now. He doesn't look like he's done much wrong this year so far. Um, you know, he always looked like he was chasing was going to be his game, and um, you know, the sky's the limit. Uh, we're really looking forward. I'd, I'd probably be nervous watching him now because. Uh, you know, obviously he he's one of the talking horses going over, but uh, we're, we're looking forward to getting over there with him, and hopefully everything will be okay. And did you expect him to progress along the lines he's progressed over fences this season so far? We always thought he was going to be a better chaser. Yes, um, he didn't leave that much respect for hurdles. He, he could kick an other one out of the way, but he, he, you know, I know it's the old saying like you know he's he was bought to be a chaser and he looks like a chaser, but he actually was. And what he did last time at Leopard Sound, do you think that was a step forward from Fairy House? Uh, I think it was. I thought he was good in Fairy House. I thought he'd done all he could do the last day in Leopardstown. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was you know, obviously five willies and one of mine. It was daunting enough. But, uh, you know, all he could do was keep winning and I wouldn't swap him at the moment on him. Yeah. 
and like he's a really exciting novice chaser. Jerry Kalam, another exciting novice chaser, but a slightly different type of horse. Yeah, Jerry's really laid back sort of a fella, so he is uh, not in phases, and um, he just does what he has to do. Uh, very, very straightforward horse. Where Mighty Potter's probably a speedier horse than Jerry, but uh, I think the step up to three miles is going to really suit Jerry. Um, we're looking forward to running him. Um, I'd say. Obviously, if Jack is back, he's going to look forward to to to, to, to riding him. Uh, he won his beginner chase, and Jordan has won two, two Grade Ones. But uh, if Jack's not back, we 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 we'll we, we, we leave Jordan on him. And he was very good in Limerick on soft ground, but then you sent him to Sandown for the Silly Isles chase yeah. over two and a half on better ground. And yeah, he won that as well. He did, yeah, a bit hairy for a couple of strides at the turn in. Um, he just hit a little bit of a flat spot, but uh, he dropped his head and he showed a brilliant attitude and galloped the whole way to the line and. Kind of when he got there, he pulled up, but uh, yeah, no, he's he's um, it's hard to know how good he is. And the three mile trip, like, yeah, you had the option of the National Hunt Chase, not qualified for that now, but the three mile trip, you think that's a good trip for him now? Yeah, I was, I was time with the National Hunt Chase, but uh, Brian uh, wasn't having us. Um, no, look, I think we're in the right race now. Uh, it's a grade one, and it's all about winning grade ones, yeah. And just briefly on Jack, you mentioned Jack, how's he doing? He's in, he's good, uh, he got good news from the surgeon last week. Obviously, next Friday is going to be uh, D Day that he'll know whether he's going to get back or not. But uh, we're keeping everything crossed. Hope hope he gets back. He's uh, he, he's a great bunch of horses to ride. Um, you know, uh, you know he, he's our number one, and uh, I can't wait to have him back. So you have a serious team of jockeys as well. Yeah, horses, don't you? I'm very very lucky. Uh, do you know, obviously, we Davy's kind of at the end of his career, and we've Jack, who he's only 22 or 3 years of age, but it seems like he's been around forever. You know. You talk about records in Cheltenham and Grade Ones. Like his record is second to none for a lot of twenty-three years of age, um, and then obviously we've you know Dennis and a few other senior fellas that ride out for us, and you know Jordan and Sam. Then they're they're the two lads on the way up. So um, I'm very lucky to have them all. Fury Road. He's on track for the Ryanair chair. Yeah, oh, he ran well the last day. He loved the drying out ground. He jumps well. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to running him. And the three card brag goes for the Albert Bartlett step. Yeah. His, his form's over two and a half, but it looks like a horse would be. I think the step up, I think the step up and trip will suit him. Uh, he kind of races behind the bridle and he's good attitude. You know that that Albert Bartlett trip would really suit him. Um, you know Adrian knows him well and he he he's very confident that three miles would be right up his alley. So uh, we're looking forward to it. The cross country chase. It's a race in which you've excelled. Looks like what Delta work on Galva going there this year. It's a really strong hand again. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a brilliant race. So I, I like I like the race. Um, you know, I always liked um, doing a lot of hunting when I was young and whatnot. Uh, yeah, no, we've got we've got um, Delta, uh, we've got Galvin, Hardline, and Mortal. We run four in the race. Uh, but uh, Delta, you know, was very good last year. Uh, he has the experience around there. Um, do you know the way, he, the way he ran in Cheltenham a few weeks ago was unbelievable. You know, I think he gave the second or the winner, sorry, eighteen and the second sixteen pound. Only beat a couple of lengths. Um, yeah, look, it's his race to lose, but Galvin will be dangerous. He, Galvin, he's a, he's a classy horse to yeah. run the race, like close up fourth in the Gold Cup. He was only beat two and a half lengths for second in mm. the Gold Cup last year. Um, yeah, he's a good horse. In terms of, like, he doesn't have any experience. Well, he's never run in a, in a cross country race, but that's not a handicap. No, race. we've had him to punch his town. We've had him uh, over to Sadiq or Scadden School, and um, he's been over to Cheltenham in school, so. Uh, don't worry, that the jumper won't be a problem. And the National Hunt Chase, you've got chemical chemical energy for that, and maybe Manila Crooner as yeah, well. Yeah, we've got Manila Crooner, uh, chemical energy, maybe Fakira. We could run two or three in that race. Um, yeah, it's it's a uh, it it depends what robot turns up in it. You know, it's a uh, jockeys are a massive a massive thing there if you've got a good jockey booked. But um, yeah, we've uh, we probably run two or three in that as well. And chemical energy, like he won well there in October, so he's got form over the track. He's got form on the track, and he loves nice ground. So uh, yeah, he uh, he um, he's in good form. We're looking forward to it. So like, I'm not going through all, all your handicappers. We'd be here for a while, but some of some of the pick of your handicappers, like if you, if you want to mention some of them yourself, like Dunboyne maybe goes for the Kim Muir. Dunboyne could go for the Kim Muir. Um, imagine might go for the Martin Pipe. Um, to be honest, the handicap waits out tomorrow, so I kind of um, I'm not just 100 percent sure what's going where until. We sit down and go through all them, but uh, we've got a, we've got a great team of horses to go over. You know, we'll have. I'd say all the runners probably most races maybe out from 
champion chase maybe I don't think I'll run on that but I think I'll run in most of the races I'll be well the Martin Pipe hurdle that's a race that you love to win yeah. for obvious reasons yeah I'd love to win it we've won it before uh, do you know Martin Pipe he'd be, he's one of my idols um, do you know I'd love, I'd love to win it again uh, you know it's but it's, it's a hard race to win it's getting more competitive every year mm. good horses kind of have a habit of winning it don't they they do, yeah, and, and the history has shown that what they've gone on to do and what exactly. they've gone on to achieve. No, it's a good race, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll fire plenty of darts at it. And you have a few who have maybe an Albert Bartlett option as well as the Martin Pipe, like Cool That's Survivor. That's right, yeah, Cool Survivor, you know, uh, Fabio de Champ, who um, even three, three car brag is in the Martin Pipe. Right. Um, do you know, uh, we, we've, we've a lot of nice horses to run in it. Um, do you know, Al Ferran, you know, he, he, he's former is a bit hot and cold but if he got there in a the day he, he could have a chance um, we have a nice bunch going over yeah and the bumper as well you, it looks like you're going to have a good hand in the bumper with a 4-5 or five in it all being well um, you know we have a nice bunch of bumper horses this year you know a lot of young horses that aren't going to go over but uh, you know better days ahead um, we're really looking forward to him uh, King of Kingsfield uh, the horse that won up and down Royal no time to wait um, Pearly Fields, Fields. Um, tsunami or tsunami, whatever I can't pronounce his name properly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'd say we're on five in it. Um, Jamie said he wants to try better days ahead, so is that significant? I'd say it's, it is a little bit, yeah. Just on Chatham Gordon as a whole, is, is, it a, is it a week that you enjoy? I'm sure it's a pretty intense week for you, but can you yeah. enjoy it? It is, it is, a, it is enjoyable. You can't wait to get there. You'd be nervous, you know, there's so many different emotions. Like, it's, it's, it's a long, draining week, but uh. There's no place like it. Um, you know, just to, to be involved in the whole in the whole thing is, is unbelievable. And uh, you know, I still pinch myself. You know, that I'm in such a lucky position to have all the nice horses I have and all the good owners and whatnot. It's great. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.